Hello, this is video on sections 1, 2, and 1, 3, describing quantitative data with numbers. I'm going to highlight some of the things, a few examples from these two sections that I think are important to understand. This example is on page 32, and it compares data from a census of sizes of the number of people living in households in South Africa compared to the UK. And often we want to compare two sets of data like this. And when we do, we really need to make sure we're using words of comparison, not just listing what the centers and the shapes are, but actually comparing the two. So here we might say we're going to use our socks, shapes, outlier, center, spread. When we start with shape here. It looks like South Africa has more of a skewed to the right shape of outliers down here, whereas the UK's shape is quite symmetric. The center, um, we can actually find the mean or the median. It would be really easy to quickly find the median. Let's see, we have a total of 50 people in each country that were um, surveyed. So our median would be right at right between the 25th and the 26th value of 50 people. So if we count here, we've got 4, 14, and this high bar, that's 18, 5 more here. So our median must be within this bar right here. Actually, nope, it's this bar right here. because that's 23 at that point. So our 24th and our 25th piece of data would be here on this bar, which is six people in this household. So that would must be the median for the South Africa group. For the UK, if we count out, it looks like that our center is gonna, our median is gonna fall right here at this high bar. That's where our 24th and 25th piece of data. So if we average the two, of course, it would be four. And so we would compare and say, we can surely see that in South Africa, the center of our, of our household data is larger with six compared to four. So you need to make sure you use words like larger and smaller. Um, the spread, I can immediately see, I think that's the main difference that I see really quickly, the spread of South Africa is much larger than the spread or variability of the data in the UK. And um, you can use numbers like for standard deviation or IQR, but here you can just visually explain how there's clearly more spread in South Africa than the UK. And um, for outliers or unusual features, remember the O in SOTS doesn't just mean outliers. It can also talk about gaps or groups, clusters of data. But here, outliers does seem to be something we want to talk about. These two points here um, seem to be far away from the rest of the data in the South Africa graph. And so you would say that there seems to be outliers in around uh, what's probably 23 in a household, very large group there, and around 15. So you would just talk about those outliers. It doesn't appear to be out any outliers in the UK data. And of course, that's just a judgment call, but uh, that data seems to be a lot closer together. Okay, when measuring center, um, the main types of measures for center we're going to use are median and mean, depending on what type of data we have. But if you're given something like a histogram like this, often you don't know exactly what numbers are in here. This bar, for instance, goes from 5 to 10. So if we conclude that our median or mean is in that bar, we don't know if it's 5, 10, 6, 6.5, etc. So often when you're talking about center, if you can't find the exact median or mean, you can just say the center would be, by looking at the amount of data here, the center would be somewhere between 5 and 10. Okay, for medians, um, medians are calculated differently, a little bit differently, if you have an odd number of 
observations in your data versus if it's even. Um, if it's, remember that the median is the center observation. So if it's odd, for instance, if you have five pieces of data, you'll have two on one side, two on the other side, and your median will be that third value in the middle. Whereas if it's even, you're going to have to take the two middle values and average them to get your median. So your median might actually not be a number that was a piece of data. So here's an example. Um, here we have 20 randomly selected New York workers and how long it takes for them to commute in minutes to work. This is on page 53 in your book. And here's the mean, very easy. Remember the symbol for mean is X bar. We're averaging them up, adding them at 5 by 20, and we get 31.25 minutes. Now, when you want the median, first you have to put it in order. And it, our data did not come in numerical order, so we're going to have to put it either in a stem plot or somehow order it. And since we have 20 pieces of data, and this is even, we need to find the median between the 10th and the 11th piece of data. So if I count off, I count from the bottom, this represents 5, this next one represents 10, 10, 15, and count up, we can clearly see that the 20 and 25 are our two middle pieces of data. And if we average those together, that gives us our median of 22 and a half. So be careful when you're counting up, make sure you can't keep the numbers in order um, when you're going up your stem plot. Averaging that to the ones. Okay, measures of spread. Um, one of the most popular measures of spread is the IQR, the interquartile range, which is the range of the middle 50%. And it's used all the time with median, very useful. And we're going to find that here. So um, we took the same data, we put it in order, going from 5 to 85. And here again is our middle two pieces of data where we found our median, and two and a half. And so then we're left with the bottom 10 and the top 10. So with the bottom 10, if we take between the fifth and the sixth piece of data, again, there's 10 pieces of data here. So the quartile, the first quartile, is going to be the average of that fifth and six pieces of data, which is 15, 15, so of course it's 15. Up here, we take our top 10 pieces of data and we average between the middle two there, which is 40 and 45, which gives you 42 and a half. So that means this quartile, this lower quartile, is the borderline for the bottom 25%, and this top quartile is the borderline for the top 25%, and so you could say 50% of the data range between 15 and 42 and a half, which you read a lot. Now the IQR is not 15 to 42 and a half. The IQR is one single number. That's a very common mistake that people want to report it. It's two numbers. So you subtract 42 and a half and 15, and 27.5 is the range of your quartile for each quartile one. And we'd interpret that, that the range of the middle half of the travel times for New Yorkers in this sample is 27 and a half minutes. It tells you how spread out it is. Now, outliers, like I said, are often a judgment call, but one of the easiest ways to test for outliers, just to be consistent, um, is to use the one and a half IQR rule. And so using this same data again, we find the IQR, which we did, 27 and a half, and we multiply it by one and a half. This is kind of just a judgment as to what, what can we decide is far off, what would be an outlier. So one and a half times that IQR which comes out to be 41.25. And then we're going to subtract it from the lower quartile and add it to the upper quartile. And that kind of gives us these fences here as to what two numbers if you're outside of the range of those two numbers, we're going to call it outliers. That's what we're going to decide to do. So any travel time shorter than negative 26.25 minutes or longer than 83.75 minutes, we will consider an outlier here.
Well, we can see, of course, there was nobody going slower, less time than negative 26, but there is more than 83.75. So we have one value of 85 minutes. One long commute that we're going to consider an outlier because it's far, far enough away from the rest of the data. So now let's take the same data and put it in a box plot. Now, a box plot is made up of the five number summary. Five number summary is the minimum, the first quartile, the median, not the mean, third quartile, and a maximum. So here we got our, we're going to scale and label for our box plot. We're going to find the median, the quartiles, the minimum, and the maximum. And on our box plot, that middle line, that's always going to be the median, so let's put that in first. Um, the edges of the boxes here and here, that's going to be our quartiles, quartile one and quartile three, 15 and 42 and a half. And then we're going to make these whiskers. This whisker goes to the minimum, which was down at five. And this whisker would normally go all the way to the maximum, but if we do a modified box plot, which we are always going to do, we want to put special attention for any outliers. So instead of the whisker going all the way to 85, we're just going to take it to the maximum right before that, which is 65 here. And then put a dot or a star out here to represent any outliers. So sometimes you can have multiple outliers there, but um, so stop the whisker at the highest piece of data right before the outlier. You could also do that on the lower end if there was a lower outlier. Quartiles at the edges of the box, and the median is a bar in the middle. And it doesn't matter how wide the box is, make sure it's well scaled. You should easily be able to see a lot about this data at the center, how spread out it is, and often a little bit of the shape as well, and the outliers. The most common measure of spread looks at how far each observation is from the mean. This measure is called standard deviation. Now, standard deviation, another measure of spread like IQR, but it's usually used with the mean. Like, so here we're going to look at nine children and how many pets. And we put it on a dot plot. And first we find the mean which is five, add them up and divide by nine children. And we're going to calculate each deviation from the mean. How far is each piece of data from the mean? Here we've got one pet away from the mean, which would be negative four. Eight pets away from the mean would be positive three. So that's what we mean when we're talking about deviation. And if we stack up all of our pieces of data, all of our numbers that we got of how many pets each child has, and we find all those deviations, subtract each one from the mean, what would they add up to? Well, we can see they would always add up to zero. So we have a negative four and a positive four down here. We have a three here, and we have three negative ones. We have a negative two and a positive two. So this sum would always be zero. So that's not very helpful in finding an average as to how far on average each piece is from the mean. So to avoid that, we're going to add in this part to standard deviation, which is squaring each deviation. So we subtract them off of the mean, we square them each, and now we kind of have how far they are from the mean squared. We don't have to worry about the negatives anymore. And we're going to sum all that up and average it. Now notice when we average it, okay, the sum of this is all comes out to be 52. And when we average it, we're not going to divide by 9. We're going to divide by 9 minus 1. And to find variance of standard deviation, we always divide by n minus 1. Um, this is n minus 1 is going to be about the same as n, especially when you have large amounts of data, which would be of course, a better sample. We'll talk more about why we divide by the minus one. But this number that we get here is called the variance. 
And the variance is a, is a measure of spread, but it's not terribly useful because we're talking about 6.5, which is not in the units of the number of pets from the beginning. It's a squared units. So we change it to standard deviation, which is just square root the variance. And then this is very useful. Now we know that on average, each piece of data has two and a half pets, 2.55 pets away from the average of five. So on average, any number of pets is going to be 2.55 above or 2.55 below. So that kind of shows you about where our spread would be. Um, this is the formula that you will see for variance. It's on your formula sheet. It's kind of scary looking, but it's just subtracting each thing from the mean, squaring it, adding it up, dividing by n minus 1. Here it is, sigma notation. Remember, it is variance until you square root it, and that then it becomes standard deviation. So, when is it best to use standard deviation, and when is it used best to use in quartile range? As I said, the mean we're going to use with standard deviation. For that, we use that usually on symmetric data because means and standard deviations are affected by really, really high outliers or really, really low outliers. So, standard deviation you want more for symmetric data. And in our quartile range and median, we can use really for anything, but especially for skewed data, we would be more likely to use these two because they are not affected by outliers. Note that the numerical summaries do not fully describe the shape of the distribution, so you always need to still show a picture of what you're doing. Thank you.